it would be able to look back through space and time and examine early stars to discover if they were making new elements. But the dream soon turned into the worst nightmare. After it was launched, they discovered that Hubble's mirror was distorted. It saw everything out of focus. It needed corrective lenses. And the only way to fix it was to send up another space shuttle. One of the repairmen was astronaut Jeff Hoffman. We were working with a $2 billion telescope, and the last thing we wanted was to break something and leave it worse off than when we got up there. First, the crew of the rescue mission had to capture the crippled telescope. Then execute a repair mission unprecedented in the history of spaceflight. First, they had to open the access doors on the side of the telescope. The one thing about working on Hubble that is very different from working on a car is you look over your shoulder and there you are in space. And the Earth is going by below you, the, the stars above you. The astronauts had to carry out fine, detailed work in the most difficult conditions. When you're working in a spacesuit, your hands are encumbered by thick, stiff gloves. It's sort of like working in ski mittens, and it was quite a challenge. All went well until Hoffman attempted to close the huge access doors. I just had to close up the doors, and when I went to close them, they wouldn't close properly. The doors were somewhat warped, and it took a while for it to sink in. This was very serious. If you can't get the doors closed, you lose the telescope. Using improvised tools, Jeff and a colleague were finally able to close the doors. It took the team five days to repair the stricken telescope. Cosmologists around the world held their collective breath. They waited to see if the most expensive telescope ever built would deliver what its designers originally promised. I well remember New Year's Eve, 1993, December 31st, when my phone rang, and it was an old friend who worked at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore. He said, Jeff, you have any champagne left over from your party? I said, yeah, we still have a half bottle in the refrigerator. He said, well, crack it open again and drink a glass because we got the first picture back and Hubble works. This is what Hubble saw. The images were beyond anyone's wildest dreams. Hubble captured the final moments of a star's life when it explodes and blows off gas and dust. It also captured interstellar nurseries of newborn stars exploding into life billions of years ago and dark pillars of cosmic dust, millions and millions of miles long, ready to spawn a new generation of stars and planets. But Hubble's true moment of glory was still to come. Over a 10-day period in 1995, the mission controllers pointed the telescope at a distant empty patch of space. What emerged was the deep field image, a tapestry of distant galaxies. Hubble was looking back in time to some of the first galaxies and stars created. It revealed thousands of galaxies that hadn't been seen before. So the, the universe became, to our consciousness, far richer after the Hubble Deep Field. It showed for the first time faint images of galaxies formed just a billion years after the Big Bang. Scientists then examined the spectrum of light from these distant stars and showed that these early galaxies had already created elements heavier than hydrogen and helium. Sir Fred Hoyle may have been wrong about the birth of the universe, but he was absolutely right about the stars. The early stars acted like giant thermonuclear reactors creating new elements. You can think of the creation of all the elements in this room as, in some sense like a, a car assembly line. Because in a car assembly line, each part is sequentially added to the vehicle until it's complete. Fusion reactions inside these young stars 
released enormous amounts of energy and heat, which forced atoms to fuse to form new, heavier elements, one after the other. Three helium nuclei combined to form carbon. Two carbon nuclei fused to form magnesium. Magnesium to form neon. And so on over a period of hundreds of thousands of years until silicon fused to form iron. Iron is a very special atom. The protons and neutrons inside its nucleus are very tightly bound together so that even the extreme temperatures inside the stars couldn't get it to fuse into heavier elements. It resolutely stays iron. It was the end of the road. The production line of element building shut down. But our universe was still not complete. There were all the ingredients to make a glass of water and some of the elements to build much of our convertible. There were also quite a few of the ingredients to make a human being. The oxygen we breathe, the calcium in our bones, and the iron in our blood. But there still weren't any of the vital ingredients like chromium for our car fender. And some metals like zinc that our bodies can't survive without. The universe was about to enter a super creative phase where it produces all the elements heavier than iron. To make the missing pieces in our birth of the universe jigsaw would take some of the most powerful explosions the universe has ever seen. Our universe has already celebrated its 500 millionth birthday. There are still another 13 billion more to go before humans appear on the face of the Earth. Giant new stars have made many of the elements in the world we see around us. But some vital elements are still missing. Heavy metals like chromium and zinc, and expensive ones like gold and platinum. To finish the job, the universe conjures up the most amazing phenomena since the Big Bang. Massive exploding stars called supernovas. When the giant stars that made the lighter elements ran out of fuel, they collapsed in on themselves, creating incredible amounts of energy and enormous explosions. These explosions were so powerful, they could fuse elements even heavier than iron and restart the element production line. Tony Metzakappa from Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Tennessee believes that without exploding stars, life itself would not exist. Life as we know it certainly would not exist were it not for core collapse supernova events. Uh, they are uh, very clearly one of the key links in our chain of origin from the Big Bang to the present day. One of the most recent and biggest supernovas closest to our galaxy was seen in the Southern Hemisphere in 1987. When a supernova like 1987A explodes, it emits light containing the signatures of the elements within it. By examining this spectrum of light, scientists can calculate what elements are being forged inside the exploding star. Massive stars, they evolve to an onion-like configuration at the end of their lives. They have an iron core, and outside of the iron core are layers of successively lighter elements. Inside the iron core, the temperature rises to 8 billion degrees, nearly 300 times